Hello and welcome back to SAS Bootcamp week three, video three. In this video, we are going to learn about reading across rows. Now, this is a concept that's going to be slightly different from everything we've learned so far. So I want to first uh, explain this concept on a whiteboard, which I would have done if we were in a classroom, but I'm going to use the whiteboard feature in Zoom to do that before we jump into SAS Studio. So bear with me as I try this. I don't think I've done this before. Okay, uh, let me explain what I mean when I say reading across rows. Now, I'm using my finger, so please excuse if, if this handwriting is not very pretty. Let's say we have a SAS data set, right? Uh, with columns A, B, C, and D, right? Now remember, every code you write in SAS is compiled by this operator called the SAS program data vector. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna draw the SAS program data vector right here. So this is P, D, V. The way the SAS program data work, vector works is when you write a piece of code, it goes to the first row of the data set that you feed into that set statement, or runs all your code, goes to the second data set, second row, runs all your code again, goes to the third row, runs all your code again. Now, if you had a loop somewhere in there, like we learned in the previous video, then for each loop, it might, for each row in the data set, it might run through several um, several iterations it might run through that code several times right but let's not forget about loops for now i just want to demonstrate the fact that the program data vector goes row after row after row now this is super convenient it lets you do a lot of different things within sas everything we've learned so far so let's say you want to use whatever um, let's say you say you write a code that says if a is greater than 50 then e equals 1 and then you can create a variable called e or you can say column F equals C plus D. Well, you can do that, right? It will take the value of C and D in here and it will transport it into column F for the same row. Now, while it can do all of those things, SAS program data vector actually has blinds on, right? It can only read what is happening in that particular row of data. So when SAS is on row one, it can only read the values in row one and it can read the a value in row one the b value c value d value e value but it cannot read the value of a in row two this it cannot read because it has it's got these blinders on right now if you were in excel and you wanted to refer to uh, column a row two you would just write a function which says equals a2 and you would get to it and excel can do that excel can excel is not like sas and Excel can look at any different cell within your entire data set. SAS goes row after row for every piece of code you write. So when you have to look at SAS and when you get when you need to get SAS to look across different rows, it's, you can't directly do that. Program data vectors blinders prevent you from doing that. So uh, this is a big problem though, right? Because very often when you are working with large data, big data sets in SAS, Sometimes you need to do operations in one column as opposed to one row. Or sometimes you need to do operations in one row based on values in a different row. Or, or you need to sum values in a row, in a column together, or all sorts of things. For any of these things, SAS's program data vector cannot do these things directly, and you need to trick your way into getting these things. So the next three videos that we do for this week are basically going to be about that. So let's talk about how to get SAS's program data vectors to look across rows or to read across rows. And we will proceed by talking about different functions that can do that. The first one we'll talk about is called the lag function. The lag function, uh, one way to think about the lag function is, is SAS's program data vector is now wearing pants with pockets in it, right? And the lag function is like those pockets where you can take the value of a certain variable from one row save it in that pocket and then pull it out when you come to that next row. Right? Uh, let me see, what, let me show you guys what I'm talking about uh, and hopefully this will become a little more clear um, in SAS Studio. Okay. So, so let's say for example, um, let's say we want to work with the earthquake data set for this example. I'm going to pull up my earthquake data set, which we've used before in this bootcamp, but I want to show it to you guys just in case. Uh, it tells you what is the version, date, time, latitude, and longitude of an earthquake, magnitude, depth, 
uh, and what region the earthquake occurred in. So it gives you a bunch of information about several, uh, about several earthquakes that happened. Most of these earthquakes happened in 2012, by the way, and it's a real data set that uh, I obtained from the US Department of Geology or something like that. Well, so in this data set, let's say I want to, I'm gonna create a new data set called Stronger Earthquake, and I'm gonna set my earthquake data set here. Bear with me for a second. Uh, now, if you want to utilize this slag function, which is like a, uh, which is like one of those pockets in your banks, you have to just use the lag function to get SAS's program data vector to remember what happened in the previous row. Now, in this data set, we have a column called depth, which tells you what was the depth where the earthquake originated, the focus point for the earthquake. Uh, I can create a new row in this data set called previous row depth and set it to lag off the depth variable. That's it, it's as simple as that. When you tell SAS this, what happens is that um, when SAS's program data vector goes on the first row, it executes that function and it remembers the depth in that row and then carries it over to the next row, right? And saves that value in a new variable called previous row depth. So we are creating a new variable now which basically reflects the value of depth for the exact very row of power. Let me run it and I'll show you what this means. So here is our depth variable, which is the variable that we are using right now. And here is our previous row depth. If you remember, so, so the first row's depth is 7.1. The second row, we have a column called previous row depth, which is equal to 7.1. And then 126.2 is 126.2. And then 20 is the third row, is the depth of the third row. In the fourth row, we have the value 20, right? So it basically is like those packet, pockets on your pan. And SAS's program data vector stores those variables in a new column in the next row so that you can pull it out when you are in that next row in order to do whatever you want with it. So what would you want to do with it? Uh, you can do anything you want, right? So for example, let's say you want to... Uh, compare the depth of one row with the previous row. So you want to say if depth greater than previous row depth, then stronger earthquake equals one, right? If it is a deeper uh, earthquake, then I'm going to assume it is stronger. I, I don't know if this is true. I'm not a geologist. Uh, just bear with me as I, as I demonstrate an example here. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm comparing depth in one row to the row right before it. And I'm using this, uh, this as the condition in my if then statement to create a new variable called stronger. All right, let me check my log. Log looks good. Um, I'm going to unselect a few variables here just so that it's easier to look through these things. Okay, let's look at this now. So this is the depth column. This is the previous row depth, which was created using the lag function. And then this is my stronger variable. Let's look at row two, ignore row one for now. Let's look at row two. In row two, the depth of that earthquake was 126.2, right? Now we are comparing that to 7.1, but we are not actually comparing it to the different row. We are still staying within the rules and the bounds of the program data vector. But because we've used the lag function, we've brought the previous row's depth variable to this row and now, we are all in one row now. So now I'm making a row to row comparison of two columns in the same row. 126.2 is compared to 7.1. It is higher, so stronger was equal to one. In the next row, you'll see 20 is being compared to 126.2, but we are not reading across rows. We are actually reading within the row. We are just accomplishing reading across the rows using that lag function. And 20 was compared to 126.2 in that same row, which is not stronger, so stronger equals zero. And that works for every single row in the data set. So 2.8 gets carried over to 2.8 here. When compared to 8.9, 2.8 is less. So, so stronger gets equal to one, right? So lag is one of the simplest and easiest ways to accomplish, um, to accomplish this thing that is reading across rows. Uh, and it's really simple to do. And not only can you do, use the lag function to read the row of the, read the value of the previous row, you can read the value of the you can read the value of the variable two rows above it. If you want to do that, just type lag two. So if you want to type lag two and hit wrong, 
let's see. Um, so that's a 7.1 gets carried over two rows down from it. Not one row, but two rows. And if you want to do three, just type lag three. And you can keep going on like that, right? If you do this, you are basically saying, I want to carry down the value of depth so for these many rows. So 7.1 goes from row one to row four now. And you can still use that within an if-then statement. Now, if you don't want to do this much work, you can always use a shortcut. Instead of typing in the variable of variables name, you can just write in the function right here. So if you do this, for example, or you're still accomplishing the same thing, but you're not creating a new variable, you're just embedding that function within the depth, within that if uh, condition, if you will. So if I do this, uh, I could have used the word previous row depth here, which is the name of that column, but instead I'm just saying lag depth, which is that function on the depth variable. And this will accomplish the same thing that I had earlier. So you can use a shortcut and you can use lag functions within your condition in the if statement and it accomplishes the same thing. Now, a couple of very, very important things to remember when you work with lag functions. The first function thing is something that you probably already observed, which is that when you use the lag function, the first row is always missing. And why is it missing? Well, the lag function pulls in the value from the previous row. What's the previous row for the first row? Nothing, right? There is no previous row because you are on the very first row. So whenever you use a lag function, be sure to think about how that affects your first row. Whenever I'm using the lag function, what I will do is I will just say that uh, my new variable stronger should be set to zero for the first row. The easiest way to do this is using a hidden variable called underscore n underscore. Uh, the underscore n underscore is a variable that's in every single data set, but it's hidden, so you can't usually see it. And it usually refers to the row of that data set. So underscore and underscore is one for the first row, it is two for the second row, three for the third row, so on and so forth. So whenever I use the lag function, I will go ahead and immediately type in for the first row, just please set stronger to zero and let's not worry about comparing it to a previous non-existent row. So if you do this, we will see that my log function works. Uh, log doesn't say anything about the fact that you use a hidden variable because as far as SAS is concerned, it still exists. It's just not showing us that variable. And then you open the data set, now stronger equals zero. So for the first row, we actually have a value, right? You can even do other things. You can say for the first row, set previous row depth to be equal to zero if you want it. You can do anything you want to account for that. Just make sure you're cognizant of the fact that when you use the lag function, the first row is going to be uh, wonky when you look at the data set. The second most important thing to be aware of when you use the lag function is be very, very careful when you use the lag function within an if statement. What do I mean by that? Let's say I want to use this lag function like this, but instead of just writing uh, this statement as it is, I want to add an if class in front of it. So I want to say if um, magnitude of the data set, magnitude of the earthquake is greater than or equal to two, only then I want to do this, uh, this creating this new variable. And uh, I don't want that previous, I don't want to come look at previous row depths for the little earthquakes that are less than uh, a two on a Richter scale. I only want to do that with the significant earthquakes. So if magnitude is greater than two, then previous row depth is equal to lag depth. At the outset, this will look okay, right? And there are many cases, I promise you, working within large administrative claims data where I've needed to run the lag statement, that lag function to create a new variable only when a certain condition is met, just like I'm showing you guys right now. But you have to be very, very careful when you do this. When you use the lag function to create a new variable within an if then statement, then the lag will only remember the value of the previous row that met that condition. What does that mean? Um, let me show you guys what that means right here. Okay. So let's look at this. So magnitude, so remember our condition was magnitude greater than two, right? So that condition is met here, 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 here. Here the condition is not met. So when the condition is not met, previous row depth variable is not created, it's just missing, which is fine. But now on the row right after it, the condition is met again, magnitude is greater than two. And in this case, previous row depth is, the variable is created and it's equal to lag of depth. 
but look at what it does it does lag depth and the depth here is not 25.5 it's 21.9 right so what it is doing is it is pulling the lag value for the previous row that met that condition it's not going to just pull the 25.5 the previous row that met that condition was this row and here the depth is 21.9 so that's the value that comes in here and sometimes you know this is exactly what you want you just want to compare each earthquake of magnitude over 2 to the previous earthquake of magnitude over 2 so maybe this is exactly what you intended but you just have to be cognizant of the fact that if you use it within the if then statement the lag will skip some rows sometimes and if you are not expecting that your program might your output might be completely wrong but you would never know it because sas won't throw an error sas does not know what you want to do in this case sas is just going to give you the lag value of the previous row that met that condition it's not going to give you a warning not a note not an error nothing it's just going to execute it and you might have an uh, you might have an erroneous result on your hands right so be sure to check your data set when you use the lag function and as far as possible try to avoid creating that lag function variable within an if then statement you can do it if you absolutely have to but be cognizant of what it means and what sas is doing in the background when you use that